name is Connor Hicks. I'm a senior developer at 1Password in the product discovery team. Uh, and today I'm here to talk about WebAssembly in a way that might not be familiar to some of you, and that is WebAssembly on the server. So WebAssembly uh, is traditionally a browser-based technology, um, but I'm here to tell you that it actually has quite uh, interesting potential on the server side. So I'm going to talk about server-side WASM as it is today and what it could be in the future. So we'll cover uh, WASM today. We'll cover WASM runtimes. We'll look at WASM at the edge, which is an interesting set of functionality by a couple of different cloud vendors. And then we'll talk about WASM on the server and all the different potential that uh, it has in that context. So WASM today is something you might be more familiar with. It's the more traditional uh, context that WebAssembly is talked about. And that is using WebAssembly to compile code uh, that isn't JavaScript generally to be used in the web browser. Um, so a great example of this is our 1Password X browser extension has been using Rust compiled to WebAssembly for a long time. Um, the, the engine that uh, analyzes your web pages and determines where to fill in your various 1Password items, like your logins and your passwords, um, that's been a WebAssembly module for quite a while now. And we saw an order of magnitude increase in performance when we adopted that method, actually. Um, some other examples are Blazor, uh, which is a C-sharp uh, way of building web applications. Uh, Vugu, which is Go, uh, U, which is Rust, and Qt for WASM, which is a C++ library. Um, these are all different, you know, languages being used for the same thing via WebAssembly. So you can take the native code written in these various languages, compile it down to the common WebAssembly format, and then your browser can run that module. It allows it to interact with the DOM. It allows it to, you know, bind to uh, functions uh, and APIs that are available through JavaScript and the other browser APIs. And it allows you to run, you know, the same code that maybe you have on your server, you know, sharing data types and um, all these kinds of things. So there are some really fascinating uh, use cases for WebAssembly on the client side. Um, but we're here to talk about WebAssembly on the server. So how do you run WebAssembly outside of the browser? Well, you need a runtime. So a runtime is, you know, a uh, an application uh, that runs, you know, on the command line or um, via a, a static library that allows you to load your WASM module and, you know, run it as if it was just any other program. So WASMer, WASM Time, WASM3, WAVM, and Lucid, these are some common, um, you know, emerging WASM runtimes that have been uh, coming out from the community as of late. And um, they're really starting to build this ecosystem of uh, capabilities, you know, to run WASM anywhere. Um, you could theoretically run them on anything from a massively powered server down to, you know, a Raspberry Pi or, a, you know, an embedded system. Um, and this is really great because, you know, it, 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 un, it decouples WASM from the V8 runtime and the, um, and the browser's, you know, kind of cage that it's been in for, for a long time. Um, and it allows us to, you know, add capabilities to WASM to make it useful on the server. So WASM at the edge is not a new concept, actually. It's something that has been available for quite a while now. Um, some, some examples you may have heard of are Fastly, Compute at Edge, and Cloudflare workers. And this has come around because of the performance that has been found uh, in these, you know, in compiling languages to WebAssembly. Uh, you've been able to take your Rust or C++ code and bring it down to this common format, uh, WebAssembly. And then these cloud providers can actually run these web assemblies in an extreme, uh, these modules, I should say, in an extremely lightweight manner right at the edge of their network. So in like the Cloudflare worker example, they have, you know, data centers all around the world. And so, you know, in less than 30 milliseconds away from any given user, 
uh, your WebAssembly module can be triggered to modify requests, do caching, do all sorts of different tasks. And because this uh, format is so lightweight and because the uh, capabilities of the native code um, are so powerful, there's unlimited different possibilities that you can you know, use these, this style of, um, of WASM module. Um, so they've been adding you know, capabilities steadily for, for a while now. And there's some very interesting potential going on here. There's uh, also a number of very compelling community projects that have been coming out as of late. So if you've been to some WebAssembly related conferences um, like WebAssembly Live or the WebAssembly Summit uh, this past year, um, there were some really great presentations about a couple of different um, projects that are being built to make WebAssembly more useful outside of the web browser context. So something like WAPC, which is the WebAssembly procedure call uh, standard, is uh, you know, adding to the ability for WebAssembly modules and uh, the host code to communicate with each other via procedure calls. So um, you know, while ha having your module interact with you know, say a Go server that is uh, hosting the module in previously may have been pretty difficult just because of the limited memory uh, layout of WebAssembly. Uh, WAPC kind of simplifies that and provides a standardized method for doing that kind of cross FFI, um, you know, communication. Um, and they've been adding all sorts of different features and, and language support. Um, I think they support, you know, all sorts of different uh, languages like TypeScript and uh, Rust and C++, et cetera. So that's a really great project. And then uh, WASC or W-A-S-C-C uh, is a, a framework, uh, a project that is allowing for sort of the actor pattern to be implemented using WebAssembly modules. So um, being able to uh, bind capabilities to your WASM modules, um, things like a Redis cache or an HTTP server uh, can be dynamically bound to a WebAssembly module. And those capabilities can be, you know, controlled very tightly by the host that is running the module. Um, and the, the modules themselves, the code that was written uh, for those modules doesn't need to be directly aware of them. Um, they can just bind to a set of APIs and it gives you really powerful control over um, what is running in your in your um, server side code. And then uh, we have things like SSVM, which is a project for uh, running WebAssembly uh, with applications like uh, AI models and uh, for blockchain applications like smart contracts. Um, this is a uh, an emerging project that's um, been gaining some steam. Um, so I suggest you go check that one out. Uh, I don't work with the blockchain or, or with AI models, so I can't speak too much about it, but I think it's pretty interesting. Um, and then there's Atmo, which is a project that I'm going to be talking about um, a little bit more. Uh, and the, the goal of Atmo is to enable um, a more seamless uh, experience when building WebAssembly modules for the server. Uh, and it's going to be making things much easier for uh, developers when when wanting to run WebAssembly uh, in sort of a web service type scenario. So how can WASM fit into a server side system? Well, um, we've been seeing some patterns emerge lately uh, in sort of the, the server side development uh, community, which is you know the desire to simplify. And that is coming in the form of things like functions as a service or uh, serverless technology, if you will. Um, there's things like AWS Lambda, uh, OpenFast, the, uh, the serverless uh, framework, things like that are really designed to, to make things simpler again because um, things have gotten much more complex in the last five or 10 years with the rise of microservices and whatnot. Uh, it's made things you know, more difficult uh, and bootstrapping a simple service should not require you to need to understand 
um, the all sorts of container runtimes and different virtual networking technologies, et cetera. So the desire to simplify has been around for quite a while. So um, this idea of creating simple, unified, function-based applications is um, something that's been coming around for quite a while now. And I think that WASM can really help with this goal um, by building these very, you know, tightly constrained, um, highly composable uh, modules from various languages, you know, really whatever you want, and, and fitting them together into whatever, you know, configuration uh, that you need for your application is, is pretty compelling. And allowing some kind of framework or hosted system or platform to really uh, take on all of the complexity and just let you write these functions, um, that's going to be a pretty great way to build out you know, different types of services all the way from the simplest cases all the way up to, you know, more complex and uh, larger topography systems. So this idea of, of WASM module bundles is, is something that I've been exploring with the Atmo project, and that is the ability to write a whole bunch of functions, you know, standalone singular functions that each perform a very, you know, tightly constrained uh, job, and then being able to describe in a declarative manner how those different functions should be triggered, and then bundling all of that up into a single thing that can be easily deployed. Um, it's been pretty interesting, and I think it's very uh, ergonomic from the developer's perspective, but also from you know the DevOps side, being able to package up um, your your code in this very simple way, and then allow a, a framework or a platform to uh, you know deploy those functions onto a a cluster that you just don't necessarily need to understand the the structure of, um, and knowing that it will handle the taking the various inputs, whether they're events or HTTP requests or whatever and um, letting the framework um, you know, schedule these functions, uh, trigger them as needed, and then uh, handle the output is, I think, a pretty interesting use case for, for WASM. Um, and it's uh, these, these modules, because they come out so small, right? They are uh, compiled down to a very small size. Uh, it makes a lot of things really easy. You know, you can put them into an S3 bucket, or you can put them into a registry like uh, WAPM, which is WASMR's um, WebAssembly Package Manager. You can you can use things like that to very easily uh, deploy these these bundles to your server and have your um, your WebAssembly you know platform or framework uh, fetch them, deploy them, and then run them seamlessly. Um, so I'm going to give a, a very 30 second overview of the suborbital project that I've been working on for the past year or so. Um, and that is uh, combining these three things um, to allow for this type of workflow. Um, so Vector is uh, an edge router. It uh, handles various different inputs like HTTP requests and, and events and whatnot, and um, allows them to be routed to various uh, modules or jobs um, and then hive the job scheduler can then um, flexibly and scalably run these functions and uh, manage their execution and then grav is a messaging mesh um, this is a term that i think i made up which is really just allowing um, your message bus to operate in concert with your service mesh um, rather than having a centralized broker, like most uh, messaging or eventing systems, um, Grav actually is decentralized, and so it uses your service mesh uh, to facilitate uh, asynchronous communication between nodes in your system um, to make sure that you know your 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 system is scalable and uh, you're not you know hitting the pitfalls of uh, various RPC or HTTP communication when you're when you're looking at services. Um, so these three things are kind of the building blocks. Um, they're all in beta right now, and um, they've been quite successful. Uh, we've I've seen some really great results out of these three, um, but on their own, they they don't um, allow for for what I've just been talking about, which is these easily deployable WASM module bundles. 
Um, so the, the new project, which wasn't quite ready in time for this presentation when I had to submit it, um, but hopefully by the time this, um, this airs at the conference, um, there will be sort of a, an initial alpha release, and that is um, what I'm calling Atmo. And so Atmo uses those building blocks of the, the router, the job scheduler, and the messaging mesh to create that WASM-powered uh, platform or framework uh, that I was kind of alluding to. Um, so the goal of Atmo is really to take those, um, those WASM bundles. It'll take, you know, your, call it a bag of functions, right? You can really just build any number of functions, package them together into a bundle, which is essentially just a, a compressed archive, um, along with a declarative description of how those functions should interact with the outside world um, based on different inputs. And then Atmo uh, will use those three building blocks to handle whatever you describe. And the, uh, the implication here is that you will no longer need to care about Docker images or you know, you'll no longer need to care about scheduling on a container runtime. You can just let Atmo run in your cluster and, you know, it will auto scale itself um, using whatever technology you're running it on, whether it's an auto scaling group or Kubernetes or whatever. And, and then uh, it's designed to intelligently run those functions uh, as described um, when you, when you deploy them. And so, I'm hoping that um, you'll be able to uh, see this project live by the time this conference happens. Um, so you can you can visit suborbital.dev to um, to get emails about um, the the project as it updates. And um, that that project there, GitHub uh, slash suborbital slash Atmo, should be live um, by the time this conference uh, exists. Uh, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to have some some examples uh, in that repo that you can look at where um, you know functions can be very easily composed to build uh, the business logic and the um, the various different you know workflows that you're used to with things like lambda um, and recreated in a compelling way that um, you know makes sense because of the power of of WebAssembly. Um, all right, so. I hope this uh, kind of triggers some some desire to to try out WebAssembly. It's it's a really really great technology. Um, I've seen some really incredible things built with it, and uh, I do believe that you know five years from now uh, WebAssembly will be just as you know prevalent as as Docker and and whatnot. Um, I think we're really early on in this ride. Um, I think it's really too early to tell exactly what the um, you know the the prevailing method of building with WebAssembly will be, um, just because the the ecosystem in the community is so young. Um, but I'm really hoping that uh, this gets you a little bit excited at the potential, and um, I think it's going to be uh, very interesting to see how it how it all unfolds. So, thank you very much, and um, have a great day.